Hello everybody, this is Miss Morrow at College Street Elementary and I'm here to talk to second graders today about making landmark or friendly numbers. Making landmark or friendly numbers. And the last time that we did a number talk together, we were talking about how we could show our work on a number line. So we're going to continue with thinking in that strategy. So we're going to start off with something pretty simple. Let's start off with a level one problem. These are category one problems, okay? So I'm going to ask you to think about an answer in your head, and when you know the answer, you're going to give a thumbs up, okay? If you're in a room and you're the only person watching this video, it's okay if you're blurting out loud, but if you're watching with this video and there are multiple kids watching this video with you, you just want to give a thumbs up and think it in your head so that everybody around you has a chance to think of their number as well. And if you're in kindergarten or first grade, you're welcome to watch this video and give it a shot too. And if you're older in third or fourth grade and you just wanna work on some of your mental math skills, this video would be great for you. But I'm especially talking to my second grade friends today because this is right up your alley with what you are learning in school right now, okay? So let's start off with something you might be able to do in your head like 19 plus two. Can you give me a thumbs up? So when I'm thinking in my head about 19 plus two, I know that 19 is just one away from 20. So in my head, I break it apart and just count it by two. 19, 20, 21. So 19 plus two is going to be 21. Is that what you thought? All right, let's make it a little bit more complicated. Instead of doing 19 plus 2, let's change our problem to 19 plus 5. Are you thinking a number in your head? Give me a thumbs up if you think you know. So when I'm thinking about 19 plus 5, I'm going to use a very similar strategy. I know that 1 more than 19 is 20, so I'm going to break 5 up into 1 and four. That way I can start at the 20 and just add four more. I'm going to erase my earlier work that I did. So 20 and four is going to give me 24. So 19 plus five is also 24. You see how I'm using 20 as my friendly number. So I know it only takes one more to get to 20. So if I'm starting at 19, I'm just going to add that one more to make it easier to start at 20. Let's see if you could do one. Can you do 19 plus 8? Give me a thumbs up if you think you know. So using my strategy of making a friendly number, I'm going to give 1 to the 19 to change that to 20, which means I have 7 left to add, and 20 and 7 is 27. This is a really great way to be able to show your work if you're having trouble with regrouping by not having to regroup. I can just go to the next 10 and then add my ones in. All right, let's see if we can do this same strategy with a two digit plus two digit number. Let me erase my work on my number line before I start with this one. Again, I'm gonna start with 19 and I'm gonna add 12. So I'm gonna give one from the 12 to my 19, so I can start at 20 instead of starting at 19, which means now I have 11 more to add from my 12. So I'm gonna break that up into a 10 and a one. So 10 more would give me 30, and one more would give me 31. Did you say 31 as your answer to 19 plus 12? Let's do some more problems. Now, if you want to keep working on level one problems, we're gonna do another one. You can make up your own level one problems. All of my level one problems have a number that have a nine in them. So I'm going to add seven plus 19. Notice I'm still using a number with a nine in it. So you can make up your own level one problems by choosing a single digit number and then making a number with a nine in the ones place. So when I'm adding seven plus 19, 
Most of the time, people want to start with a number that's first in the number sentence. They may start with a 7. But because I know this idea of making landmark numbers, I'm going to switch my add-ins to turn that equation into 19 plus 7. That makes it easier to think about because now I can use my landmark number that's close to 19. So I'm going to give 1 from my 7 to the 19 and add that first. So now I'm changing my number to 20 plus 6. So my equation changes and using place value, I know that 20 and 6 is 26. So I'm thinking of it as 2 tens and 6 ones. So it makes that easier to add because I'm able to use my place value. All right, let's try another one. If you know that 7 and 19 is 26, use that idea of friendly numbers. Let's up our game a little bit. Let's do two digits and two digits. How about 16 and 29? Can you think about it in your head? I'll give you a few extra minutes. Would you start at the 16 or would you start at the 29 if you were adding this on your number line? Okay. I'm going to start at 29. Think about why I would want to start with the 29 instead of the 16. Remember earlier we talked about how you can switch your add-ins and you still get the same answer. If you said because 29 is close to 30, then you were thinking about my friendly number. I knew that 29 was just one away from 30, and that's going to make my problem easier to solve. So I'm giving 1 to the 29 ahead of time to change it to 30, which means out of 16, I have 15 left to add. So I'm going to break that up and add a 10, and then add a 5, and that will give me my 15. So 30 plus 10 more is 40, plus 5 more is 45. Is that the answer that you came up with? So my answer is 45. Let's try another one. Let's do 19 and 18. So remember I'm doing category one problems, so I want to make sure all of my problems have a number with a 9 in the ones place somewhere. So if I start at 19, what's my friendly number? Did you say 20? So I'm going to give 1 to the 19 to change that to 20. Now I'm starting off with 20, and I still need to add 17 more. So you could add your 1s first and then your 10s, but I just like doing 10s with 10s. It makes it easier to count, I think. Did you come up with 37? All right, let's do one more category one problem. How about this one? Think about how you would solve that in your head. I'm at 29. What would be close to 29? So what would I need to move from the 33 to give to the 29? How many would that leave me to have to add? Let's see if we can do this in our heads this time, and then we'll check it on the number line. So in my head, I'm thinking 29 plus one more would be 30. <coughs> Excuse me. 30 plus 30 would give me 60. And I already used one of my ones because I put it over here with my 29, so I would have two left. So I think my answer is 62, but I want to check it on my number line. So I start at 29, and I'm going to just add one more to get to 30. That makes it easier to add all those numbers. Then I still have 30 left to add. So I'm adding my three tens. 30 plus 30 is a double I know. That's 60. And because I already moved one over here, I only have two ones left to add. So that would put me at 62. Is that what you got as well? Good job. All right. 
let's move on to category two problems. So now we're leveling up. We're gonna do level two problems. We're gonna do a couple together, and then if you wanna continue practicing this at home, I'll show you how you can make up your own problems at home. So for level two problems, we're gonna make sure that one of our digits is always an eight in the ones place. So we wanna make sure an eight is in the ones place. Let's start off with a pretty simple one. So if I'm at eight and I want to get to a friendly number or a landmark number, that means I need to take two from my partner number because I wanna be able to make the next 10. So remember when we were starting with nine, we were adding one more to get to our friendly number. Now I'm at eight, so I'm adding two more, and now I'm at a much friendlier number to add. I like having that 10 there. So because I had eight plus five, that means I'm gonna break my five up into two to go with my eight, and that still leaves me with three. So I still need to add three more, and that would put me at 13. So we wanna think about ways that we can do this without counting up on our fingers because we're trying to use those landmark numbers to start doing some mental math. So let's try one with a two digit number. I'm at eight and I wanna add 13. So how many am I going to give to the eight to start this off with a friendlier number? Would you say two? So I'm gonna count two more from the eight and that starts me off at 10. So I took two from the 13, which means I have 11 left to add. And I can break that up into a 10 and a one to make that easier. Did you get 21 as your answer as well? Okay, let's think of another one. So I'm using friendly numbers and I'm going to change this to make eight friendlier to add to 24, which means I'm going to take two away from the 24 and that's going to give me a 10 instead of an eight to start with. And that changes 24 to 22. I'm giving two, so that means I have to take two. I'm writing this as a different way that you can think about it. So in my head, I know that if I have 22 and I add another 10, that's just gonna change that to 32. So by changing my eight to a 10, I'm able to add that easier to my second add-in. So this time I'm doing it without using the number line. On my number line, it would look like this. I changed eight to a 10 by adding two of them, and that left me with 22 to add. So now I'm at 32. Notice this time I did not break my 22 up into 10s and ones. Now that I'm doing category two problems, I'm trying to combine some of those steps to make it easier to add in my head. All right, let's try this one. What about 18 and seven more? I'm gonna give you some think time on this. Did you change 18 to 20? You can, if you take two away from the seven and give it to the 18, that changes that to 20 plus five. And that's an easier problem to think about. If I'm using place value, I know that 20 plus five more is 25. That's basically a number written in expanded form. You can do this with more problems. Remember that for a category two problem, we're putting eight somewhere in the ones place. So I'm gonna write down a few for you to practice with at home, but we are not going to put the answers on the board. This is gonna be for you to practice and discuss at home. So the next problem in this series would be See how 
how you would do at home solving those four problems using that same strategy. Change your numbers with an eight to the next friendly number and see if that doesn't make those problems easier to solve. Okay? Last, we're going to think of some category three problems. Category three problems are going to be two and maybe even three digit add-ins. So we're moving up to level three. Okay? So these problems are going to be much bigger than what we were solving. And again, you're trying to solve this in your head and think about it in your head before we solve it with the number one. So I'm doing 99 plus 38. How can I change that to a friendlier number? What's close to 99? Did you say 100? If you did, you are thinking about your friendly numbers and your landmark numbers. 99 is just one number away from 100. So I can change this problem by adding 1 from the 38 to the 99, and now I can solve 137. And using place value, I know that 130 and 7 can be written as 137. So these landmark numbers are going to come in really handy once we start using these really, really big two-digit numbers. Let's try another one. Let me move my place value there. How about 98 plus 47? <coughs> Excuse me. Can you use the idea of a friendly number to change this problem into a friendlier problem? 98 would be close to 100. So I would be adding 2 to the 98. Where did those two come from? I borrowed them from the 47 temporarily. I just added part of the 47, which means 47 is now going to be 45 because I moved those two already. So now I'm adding 145, which is so much easier to do in my head. All right, let's try another one. How about 98 plus 99? Hmm. Which one would you change? I'm going to do this two ways. You could change the 98 and make it 100 by adding two more, which means you would take two away from the 99, so your problem would be 100 plus 97. And then you would have to come up with your answer from that. Or, I'm going to use a different color. You could instead of doing that, change your 99 by adding one from the 98, which means 98 becomes one smaller. Now it's 97, and instead you're adding 100. So look at how this changes our problems. I either have 100 plus 97, or I have 97 plus 100, and we know that those are equal. So it didn't matter which strategy you chose which number you change. All right, let's try one more in a category three problem. And then I'll leave you with some that you can practice with at home. I have 99 plus 99 plus five. And I'm going to take one away from the five and give it to the 99 to change that to 100. I'm gonna take another one away from the five give it to this 99 to change that to 100. And because I took two away from my five, we did this at the very beginning of our first number talk, that leaves me with three left to add. So I'm going to add three more. So I've changed my problem, 99 plus 99 plus five, and made it 100 plus 100 plus three. And that's a problem that I can very easily solve in my head. Okay, I'm going to leave you with
with a few bigger problems for you to think about how you could change them to easier problems using your landmark numbers. So if I would like for you to practice 119 plus 26, 118 plus 17, 129 plus 16, 124 plus 26. Problem would be easier to solve than 119 plus 26. If you're stuck, think about moving one and solving 120 plus 25 instead. Would that not be an easier problem to solve? How about 118 plus 17? What number would be close to 118? If you said move 2, then you have 120. That would make an easier problem to solve. And 17 would be two smaller. So now I'm adding 16. How can I change 129 plus 16 and make that an easier problem to solve. 29 is one away from 30. So 130 is one more. And I would need to add 15, one less than 16. Now this last one, I messed it up a little bit. I didn't use a nine or an eight because you can also do this with numbers that make 10. So I'm going to move my 4 away from 124 to make that 120. And I know 4 more than 26 is 30. And that is a much easier problem to solve. Now I didn't have to do it that way. I could have moved my 6 away from the 26 brought it over here to my 24 and made that problem 130. And my second add-in, minus six would be a 20. But in both cases, I have a 20 and a 30. They're just flipped. And I still have my 100. So I would still get the same answer no matter which way I moved that number. Okay, I hope this gives you some ideas of ways that you can solve problems while you're at home in a much more interesting and fun and maybe even easier way than how you have been solving them. And I'm gonna leave you with one last picture of some problems for you to solve while you're home. Maybe I'll give you two in case you're bored. And how about these. Try solving these using friendly numbers. And if you figure out the pattern and you would like to email or text your teacher, say, hey, look what I did. Look how I figured this out. I'm sure your teacher would love to see that you're still practicing and learning while you're home. Talk to you later. Bye.